What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Flask web development tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is PyGal. So PyGal is an SVG or support vector graphics graphing module for Python. Now, uh, it works really well with Flask, Django, and a bunch of other applications that you might use it for. Because at the end of the day, all it does is produce SVG graphics. So the reason why those are nice is, first of all, they're relatively lightweight. There's not too much back end that needs to be loaded. But also, they scale very, very well. SVG scales, so you could have a huge graph or a small graph. And even the huge graph is not going to have a whole lot of loading time for it. So this is the PyGal website. You can get there just pygal.org. And these are the kinds of graphs that it generates. Now, these are kind of small versions. Uh, but uh, let's go to the documentation here. Let's just click on the line graph. Uh, you can get graphs more like this. And you can see that they're actually uh, interactive graphs. And you can even go over here and highlight various lines and stuff like that. They've got these graphs, line graphs, radar graphs, pie graphs, uh, maps, for example. Let's go to a world map here. So they've got world maps and the hovers and stuff. And what's really nice about PyGal is it's so customizable, yet the, the stuff that goes into making a basic graph is really simple. Like this is a basic graph right here, this line graph. This is the code to generate that graph. Like it's so simple. It can be just as easy as matplotlib, yet it looks a whole lot better than matplotlib uh, without too much code. So uh, so let's talk about how we can actually grab, like get PyGal and have like an embedded PyGal graph in our Flask application. So let me move this aside. First thing you're gonna wanna do is pip install. So sudo pip install PyGal. I already have it, so nothing's really gonna happen here, but you wanna get that. Next, head to your init.py here and just do an import PyGal. So that way we can actually use PyGal. Now, what we want to do is let's go back to our gingerman area. <laughs> and let me just take this here, copy that, paste. And I'm going to call this function uh, pygal example. Make sure you don't call this function pygal, just saying. And uh, the template we're going to render is going to be graphing. And then eventually we're going to pass graph data through and actually have that that work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a graph. Now again, I don't really see any point of like typing out all the little data points. So I'm going to copy and paste for the most part uh, the entire graph. So let me copy that. Again, all source code for this tutorial is located at pythonprogramming.net. Uh, link will be in the description. If there is not a link in the description, yell at me and I will add one. So this is the code to make a pretty simple graph, right? So the graph is equal to pygal.line, so it's a line graph. We change the title here, and the title is percent change coolness of programming languages over time. Our X labels are just strings. Whatever, one of the things that's really cool, you can put whatever the hell you want in there. It's just whatever the order is basically done. Uh, and then to make the graph, we this is the name of the line, and then these are the values. And these are just percent change values over time. These are real real numbers. <laughs> Not really, but they're real numbers. And uh, so that's our graph. Our graph is done at this point. Now, there are a lot of ways from here. The graph is done in the back end. But there's a whole lot of things that we can do uh, from here. And let's see if I can find it. Uh, output. So there's a lot of ways that you can output the graph. So chart render will output just basically the string of the SVG. You can output to a file with chart.render to file. So instead of chart, in our case, sorry, this might be hard to see too. So instead of chart, uh, in our case, we're calling this graph. Okay, so it would be graph.render to file. You can send it to a PNG, eTree, uh, base64 data URI. Uh, you can send it to a browser. You can render in browser PyQuery, and it looks like wow, we've even got a Flask response. So and a Django response. Now, yes, we are using Flask. Yeah, we kind of want it in a response, but actually, we want to embed this graph. So instead of using the Flask response, we are going to use the Base64 data URI. 
if you read here, basically the idea of this is so you can actually use embedded tags or image tags to include it. So that's exactly what we're gonna use. We're gonna use render data URI. So we're just gonna call graph underscore data equals graph dot render underscore data underscore URI. Boom, we got graph data. Now all we have to do is we need this graphing.html. So we're gonna come into templates. Uh, let's make a new file and we'll call this graphing.html. And we will pull that over here. And all we have to do, obviously this is already here, but all we have to do is again, you can either go to uh, the source code on Python programming at net, or really this is pretty simple to type in. Basically, where everything is the same up to here, right? So the only addition we have to embed this graph is literally embed tags. We're embedding an image of SVG and XML. The source is this graph data variable with the uh, safe filter. Okay, so we learned about the safe filter a few tutorials ago. Uh, so without that, it would not. It would look like a bunch of garbled data. Uh, and then style, we just give a max width to this uh, graph as a thousand pixels. Well, that's it. So embedding a, a PyGal graph is as simple as building the graph, which arguably most of these lines were taken up just making lines, but you could literally, like it could be basically that big. Uh, so we made the graph, convert to URI, we pass it right in here. That is it. So let me move this over. And let me just check to make sure we did. Yeah, we did import PyGal. So now all we need to do is reload over here. And now we go over to our website and our website address here was um, PyGal example, I think. Yeah, PyGal example. So let's go PyGal example. Uh, it takes exactly 110. What did we do? Render template in it. Ah, okay. Graph data needs to equal graph data. <clears throat> so let's move this up, run one more time, come back down, load. There you go. So now we have our embedded graph and we can clearly see that Python is obviously the best programming language ever. And uh, I'll just look at it dominating all these other languages. Uh, so anyways, uh, that is PyGal, embedding PyGal. All the graphs are basically the same as far as how you, uh, you know, how you create them, especially like initially you just do the dot, you know, whatever you want. So, um, oops, that was style. Here's chart type. So like, for example, bar, it would be PyGal.bar. Everything else remains the same. You can see that generating all of these graphs is basically identical. Um, once you have those, uh, there's all these different types and then you can come to styles and there's a bunch of pre-made styles here. So you could look at red, blue, dark, light. Okay. Um, let's wait for these to load here. I opened up a bunch. Oh my goodness. Everything's going very slow. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so they've got all these like pre-made styles and stuff, which are, this is, this one's pretty cool. I like the neon style. Anyway, you get the idea. But if, even if all of these are not good enough for you and you can't find one that you really like out of the billion styles that they've pre-made, uh, you can come down here and create your own custom style. So you can create your own style class. So right here, custom style equals style. Boom, that's literally calling it custom style. And then all you do is you pass that custom style into the style parameter. That's it, okay? So, and then charts, you can configure the charts in a variety of ways. You can configure the series in a variety of ways. You can have the multi-axes here. Uh, and uh, anyway, there, there is a billion <laughs> different things that you can do. Maybe not a billion, but a lot. So, I mean, this is extremely customizable, extremely easy to use as hopefully you just saw how quickly we embedded that graph. They're nice, pretty graphs. They're interactive graphs and um, they load very well and scale very well. So anyway, uh, that's that. The only thing that I would just throw out there is I've been actually using PyGal a lot in other projects. And the only thing that will cause problems, but this will cause problems in any graph, but especially PyGal, is let's say you've got 60,000 plots, right? 
it's going to literally show all 60,000 on the x axis. It'll show each little one. So you have to, if you want to fix that, you need to run it through some sort of pandas resampling, which is really simple. I actually have a pandas resampling tutorial. Uh, run it through one of those little resampling operations, highly efficient operation run. It's very quick. Run it through that, then generate your graph. Okay. But other than that, um, it's a it's a really nice graphing application. I'm really happy with it. So anyways, that's it for PyGal. Just a really quick tutorial, simple enough with PyGal. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, uh, feel free to leave them below. And the next tutorial we're going to be talking about is PayPal integration. So PayPal integration, uh, obviously what it allows you to do is use PayPal as some sort of payment processor, but also allows you to automate everything uh, in the back end. So if you're running a store, to just automatically do various things when people purchase something or maybe you're running a subscription service like plus equals one automatically upgrade people who have paid automatically downgrade people who haven't paid stuff like that um, it can also automatically do all your accounting for you and, and all kinds of stuff so uh, that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial so stay tuned for that thanks for watching